Good afternoon, guys. Uh, it is a dreadfully windy day. I feel like I feel like uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh when he's uh, <laughs> when he's when he's walking in the wind and, and Piglet's walking with him and Piglet kind of gets blown back by the wind. Um, it is uh, Monday, April the thirteenth, and uh, wow, it is a windy day. I'm so glad I'm inside. I kind of feel bad for those people who have to work outside in the, uh, uh, in the, in the wind. <laughs> okay, so, uh, today I wanted to, to look at the idea of, uh, favorite exiles. <laughs> and this, <laughs> I was reading in First Peter, and I, I think that Peter had somewhat of a sense of, uh, humor. Because he writes here in First Peter, and it's, 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 it's like ironic. And I'll read it to you. Uh, Peter, this is First Peter, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Don't really worry about that. The point being, if you don't know where those places are, don't worry about it. it the point being that it is uh, not Israel. <laughs> um, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit for, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Now, the reason why this is um, ironic is because he calls these people who are not in their home elect exiles. And then at the end, he, end of this little section here in verse 2, he says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you while you're in exile. Oh. And um, what he's talking about here is he's talking about salvation. Uh, but there's something else I want to look at. So it says here at the beginning, it says, uh, to those who are elect exiles. Now, the word elect basically means favorite or chosen. Uh, so, uh, to those who are chosen exiles, to those who are favorite exiles. Um, the idea here being that God has uh, has a plan for them, that he's called them to a purpose, that purpose being salvation, to be saved. Um, absolutely, but there's something else you think here. So, he calls them, he calls them chosen, chosen by God, and but they are still exiles. So they have no home. They're looked down on. They're lacking pleasures that typical people do have. Like, for instance, um, if you've ever uh, uh, seen, like, uh, uh, immigrants, you know, uh, who are kicked out of their uh, homes, you know, they don't necessarily have the same things as the people who have been living there because, you know, they don't have their home anymore. Like, for instance, what happened with the whole Syria thing. Um, or I guess you could say is still happening there. But... Um, so he, he calls them, he calls them uh, these exiles, these people who don't have a home, he calls them elect. And then in verse 2 he says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Now foreknowledge basically means that God knew what was going to happen. He foresaw it. He um, foreknew what was going to happen. Uh, so to those who are chosen as exiles, and then in verse 2, according to the foreknowledge of God, according to what he knew was going to happen. And, and now you see what I, why I'm saying. It's, it's almost like Peter's being, trying to be ironic here. You know, when, when you lose something as big as your home country, you know, that kind of stuff, you don't really feel like chosen. You don't really feel elect. You just feel kind of like, I have undergone this huge loss, and I don't know what to do with it. And then here's Peter saying, hey, you, you who are favorite, you who are chosen, it's like, oh, Okay, <laughs> and uh, their despair, their troubles had purpose, and God was working in them and through it. Now, now this is this is really an amazing idea here. So the, these people who are exiles, they are elect and foreknown by God. Now, roll with me on what this means. That means that their despair, their chaos, their troubles had purpose. A lot of times we go through it and we go through something and we think, you know, everything happens for a reason. And that's not really necessarily true, but God is able to give purpose to the, to the chaos of life. And in First Peter, that's exactly what we see is happening. So God has a purpose for what, for what they're going through. He knew that they were going, going to go through it. And then he says this in the next part after that, um, in the sanctification of the Spirit. So what that means is that God is working in them and, and through the situation. That's what sanctification basically means, that he is he's building character in them. Um, 
And then he says, uh, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. So this all having two main purposes, um, so that they could do good works and so that they could be saved. So basically uh, the idea being here that it was for their benefit and for the benefit of others around them. Um, and then th this idea is kind of one-sided at this point. We're pretty much looking at, at, at God, how God views them. God sees them as elect. Uh, God for, foreknew what, what was going to happen, and he's, he's got a plan. He's got a purpose. Nothing is surprising God. None of this bad news is like catching him off guard. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's leading them somewhere. All right. But so far, this is pretty one-sided. Well, then you get down to verse 7, and it gets a little bit more back and forth, more like where do we come into the story. It says that um, this, is, this is causing genuine faith in us in verse 7 which is more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire. So let's just kind of stop and think about that. These troubles that we go through, they're hard, yes, and they are a test of our faith. But as our, as our faith is tested, we grow, our, our faith grows, and that faith is more precious than gold. See, when you're in exile, you're lacking in things a lot of times, like physical things, for instance, uh, and here, Peter says, you know, yeah, you're exiles, but check, check it out. You are elect exiles. You're chosen by God. Not only that, but the faith that is being built in you is more is worth more than whatever you've lost. To me, that's very hopeful. Because that means no matter what struggle I'm going through, what I'm dealing with, what I've lost, that God has a plan, that God has a purpose, and that what he's producing is worth more than what I've lost. That, those are some powerful statements. So with all this, this all, with all this being said, First Peter is a very difficult book, for, book to understand. I would not recommend starting on it. If you're new to the Bible, definitely do not start there. But um, it's one that I just started really focusing on the other day. And uh, I guess I could summarize all the stuff that we talked about just now by saying this. You are still favored and chosen by God even in your exile, even in your problem, even in your um, insurmountable issue that you're going through, you're still favored and you're still chosen by God. And to me, um, that, that's very powerful. That's very encouraging. So I hope it is to you too. Um, you guys have a great rest of the day. And uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. Ch uh, Pastor Randy will have, uh, will have another encouraging word for you guys tomorrow. Okay, you guys have a good day. Bye.